Another popular tool out there is quizzes. Quizzes is very similar to Kahoot and you'll actually see in the style and the gameplay, but many teachers use quizzes for a variety of reasons. One of the things that teachers say to me, uh, particularly about quizzes that they like, is that it doesn't necessarily have to be a live experience, although I believe Kahoot did build in some self-paced experiences as well. But they do like the idea that you can actually assign a quizzes game for homework or to be done in an asynchronous fashion. So let's take a closer look at how you can design and share a quizzes with your students. So here is the quizzes dashboard. This is where you're going to find and create quizzes for your class. I'll do a quick tour of the different areas of the dashboard, show you how to create a quiz or modify an existing quiz that might already be out there in the public area, and then share it with your students. i also have some time to show you guys what it looks like from the student viewpoint, uh, especially from the self-paced version of it or the asynchronous version of the quiz because that's what a lot of folks do really like using quizzes for as opposed to the live lessons which they do have live lessons and I'll show you guys that in a second as well uh, but primarily a lot of teachers like to use this for the asynchronous features and the self-paced features that they have for students all right so really quickly up at the top this is the search bar where you can search for things in your library or in the public library uh, on the left side, that's where you have your data reports and your settings. And then in this middle area will be the folders and the different quizzes that you've already made. So first off is if you haven't made any before, one thing that I suggest doing is just doing a quick search of the library just to see what types of quizzes are already there. So say, for instance, I'm teaching a civics course and I'm teaching a lesson on, say, Congress. So I can type that into the top here. And in my library, you can see that there aren't any existing quizzes on Congress. But what I'll do is I'll change this dropdown. I'll go to the quizzes library, do that same search. And then a ton of existing quizzes that have already been made on Congress show up. And uh, they usually are filtered by the number of times they're played, but then you get a quick overview of the questions that are there. And if you like it, you can save it to your library and then also edit and make a copy of it yourself. So I'll show you guys what that looks like in a second. Um, you can also create your own quiz from scratch. All right, so if you want to just go in and create your own quiz on the top left, you click the Create button and choose this quiz option. So I'll just quickly go through the features and then show you how to pull an existing template to turn into a quiz. So once you get into your quiz, you have a few different options here. Um, you can create several different examples of questions. So you can have multiple choice, checkbox, fill in the blank, poll questions, open-ended questions, and also there's a slide version if you just want to add in some content. So just to show you what some of these would look like, it's pretty straightforward. You have your question, your answer options, but another couple nice things that it has here is it has uh, an ability to add in math equations and an ability to add in media. So if I want to add in a picture, audio, or video in the background, uh, this screen pops up gives me that option. So for instance, if I had a question on the Bill of Rights and I want to add in an image, that would go along with the question options. The other thing that you'll notice is on the bottom there are topic tags and uh, there's a way to adjust the length of time that students have to answer the question. And the other nice thing is that for each question you can have an answer explanation. So you can actually add that towards the bottom uh, which will appear for your students once they answer the question. Okay, so that is how you build out your own questions. The other thing you can do is teleport and what teleport means is you can actually go in to your own lessons or if you check this box uh, it's basically just a giant question bank of all the questions that have been entered into the quizzes platform. So if I had a question that I wanted to ask on, say, the First Amendment, all I have to do is click in this box, and then I can see examples of First Amendment-themed questions. So if I click on it, I see a quick preview of what it looks like, and then I can add it directly to my quiz. So really nice way if you want to streamline the process of building out your own quiz but using the question bank either from your own library or from the public library. All right, so I'm going to back out, uh, go back to my library, and this is an example of a lesson uh, or a quiz that I found from the public uh, area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the search and show you where I found that. So if I go to quizzes library, I'm going to search for American government. See, this is the one that popped up that I was able to make a copy of. So I'll cl uh, click on this one. I can save it into a folder. So I created a couple folders. You can create your own collections, as many as you'd like. And then what you can do is you can edit it. And when you edit that, uh, 
that game, it's going to create your own version of it. So you can go in and say, for instance, there's a typo or if you just want to change something up with one of the questions or say I wanted to add some media, some video or pictures to one of them, I can go in and edit or just add as many as I wanted to this particular quiz. All right, so that's how you can build a quiz from scratch or you can find one from the library. Next, I'm going to show you how you would actually assign this to your students. So I'm going to go into the My Library. I'll go to the American government game that I created. And you have a few different options here. One is if you're going to do this live in class. So when you have a live class session, like say you're doing it in person or if you're doing it through a Zoom call or Google Meet or some other type of conferencing platform, you have a couple options within the live mode itself. The first is a classic. So that's where students actually go in, you launch the quiz, but they go through at their own pace and then you would see the leaderboard and live results on your screen. The other option is you control the pace so that everybody advances through each question together simultaneously. So even though they're on their own device answering the questions, you would control the pace of every question. The other option, and this is the one that I'm going to show you live how to do, is the assign. And what you would do here is you would actually choose the deadline for it, if you chose to have a deadline. If you want no deadline, you just click there. And then once you click the assign button, it's going to give you a share link. So you can share directly through Google Classroom if you're using that uh, as the main platform for your class. Or you can just grab the link. Uh, that's an easy way to do it. Uh, the third option is to share that link with your students and then they would enter that join code. So any one of those ways will get your students in there. I'm just going to do the copy link and show you what it would look like from the student's viewpoint. All right, so I just entered that link to the game and I am entered as if I were a student. So this is what it would be from the student viewpoint. I have a few different options here, the read aloud music sound effects I can adjust and this is where I would put my name in. And now that I've started the game, if I was doing it live, I could have other players jumping on in, but uh, this is just the demo, so I'm just gonna start the game. And you can see I have the question up top. If there was any uh, media involved with the question, it would be up here as well. And then I would choose on the bottom what the correct answer is. So I'm just gonna go through, answer a few questions and show you some of the different game elements that are built into this. All right, so you can see, I'll just pause for a second. Up at the top, there's a streak score. You can see these little icons uh, for how many in a row that you've got. All right, this is an example of a power-up. This is just something that pops up at different parts of the game. So I got a double jeopardy, which means that it'll double the points for any particular question I get. A few different options here, uh, but you'll see that a lot of these are built into the game to add a little bit more excitement and engagement for the students. All right, I'm gonna show you an example of a power up here. So I'm gonna hit that 50-50, and what that will do is it will activate and reduce two of the questions. Next, I'm gonna use my double jeopardy power up. All right, so once you're done the game, it's gonna give the students a quick summary of their percentage correct. Also with some stats at the bottom regarding uh, average time per question and their streaks, as well as the correct answers and a quick review of all of the questions from the quiz. All right, so back on the dashboard, if you wanna take a look at the reports over to the left, you'll see all of the quizzes that you currently have running. Uh, these are just samples that I set up for some biology and American government quizzes. And then also ones that were assigned and completed. So this one is complete. So you actually go in, you can get a quick overview of the accuracy of your students, and then also drill down into the specific student scores, what they got correct, what they didn't. And then you could even break it down by question with uh, percentage correct. So really nice analytics. Uh, they keep it simple, easy to view, easy to process. And then you could also download them and put them into a spreadsheet and do a whole bunch of crazy stuff if you prefer. Uh, but for the most part, this is a way that you can kind of see how students did. Uh, those topic tags that came up when I was showing you how to create the quiz, this is where if you want to actually sort them by topic area, you could with the tags. Not necessary, but another way that you can sort the data to see how your students did.
So there you have it. There is your quick overview of quizzes and an example of how you could use that for an asynchronous gamified quiz assignment for your students.